And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a beautiful 8th of April, 2023. Come up this episode of the Krusty Connect podcast, episode 204. A Bud Light and more BS for the masses. That's right. The big controversy over a gay man playing to, or correction, pretending to be a girl, advertising for Bud Light and Nike and other brand names as we speak, plus more garbage in Canadian politics. Coming at you shortly. Please stick around. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. I do swear. Throw unlawful gestures and smoke cigarettes. See you in a bit. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. Yes, sir. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 204 of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Uh, yes. Bud Light and more BS for the masses. I am your host, Krusty Canuck, and welcome to this beautiful spring day. Firstly, my apologies for my absence the past month. I've had a really busy schedule in regards to my work and my other work outside the podcast, trying to get my screenplays and creative writing and all that sorted out too, plus some administration with Veterans Affairs and more tax BS. But I will save that for another time. Welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Like I say, once again, pardon my absence. If you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe. All that good stuff, share all over your social media platforms while we still can. I know Bill C11 here in Canada is still in the process of being, how do you say, instigated. But needless to say, let's uh, cross our fingers and hope for the best, right? But like I say, this podcast is also brought to you in the part by Battle Fit Bodywear. That's right. Be Battle Fit. Be Limitless. Be Battle Fit. Battle Fit Bodywear. You'll get an advertisement for them later in the episode too, ladies and gentlemen. So in recent news, I guess there's big controversy over a Dylan McCavey. I think his name, I don't know. We'll just call him Dylan anyway. A lot of you people know who he is. I personally don't care who's gay, straight, bi, tri, whoever identifies as a shoe or a rutabaga. I don't care. Live your life. Do what you want to do. Uh, but needless to say, a lot of people making a big stink about him uh, being endorsed by Anheuser-Busch, the big brewery that looks after Bud Light and numerous other products for the beer connoisseur out there. Uh, I personally... I personally don't care, ladies and gentlemen, honestly. I don't care if they have a gay man or a gay woman or someone who looks like this or someone who looks like that, who wants to advertise beer, who gets endorsed for it, fine. You know, I'm not going to lose any sleep because there's a gay man who wants to be a girl, who says he's a girl, dresses like a girl, whatever, you know. I, for one, I'm just getting sick and tired of all this controversy about people saying, well, a trans man is this and a trans woman's that. Oh, they are women. They are men. And I'm just, I don't know. I don't know. Like, as far as I'm concerned, I do not need a science degree to tell the difference between a biological male and a biological female. And you can slice and dice and cut yourself up all you want, but your internal organs, and especially your skeleton, will dictate otherwise. Okay, and I mean your internal sexual reproductive organs, not your liver, not your lungs, not your heart. Okay, now regardless of how anyone feels, and I've talked to a couple of transgendered persons on this show, and they're great people. I never judge them based on their transition into whatever or whomever they want to be. Okay, and both of them have validated too that they were born a certain gender, a certain identity, but something internal in them made them transition. And they did it on their own terms. They didn't do it because mom and dad or mom and mom and dad and dad said, you can be a butterfly. You can be a girl. You can be a little princess. You can be a little snow prince and have lots of cupcakes. No, they did it on their own terms as functioning and working adults. They made the decision and I'm all for that. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm all for people making decisions based on their own scruples and their own moral fiber 
to get out there and do something with themselves. Whether you want to go to the gym and have the cut figure like Arnold Schwarzenegger did back in the 80s, or if you want to have a figure like Jane Fonda did back in the 80s. Do what you want to do. Eat what you want. Drink, dance, be merry. Whatever you identify as, go for it. But like I say in my bio on my webpage, don't try to convince others that the sun is the moon, the moon's the sun to further a narrative. And you can pull whatever science textbook out of your ass all you want and say, this is what it is because we say so. This is what it was because we say so. The fact remains is that straight people, okay, don't want to sleep with gay people. Okay. If you're a trans woman and you're attracted to a straight male, chances are you're not going to get any. So you can sit there and stomp your feet and say, you're a girl, you're a girl, you're a girl, you're a girl. Go under the knife, change things around, what have you. Now, I've never experienced that kind of rendezvous with somebody prior to my marriage, (laughs) even during my marriage, because I married 100% biological female. And she is the best thing that's ever happened to me. You know, she's backed me up in tough times. She's listened to some of my stories and she's helped me slay some of my demons. And I am the most grateful man in the fucking planet because of the likes of my wife. Right. But when I hear these individuals talk about representation and inclusivity, that's fine. I am all for representing any group of society and representation. But I believe it being done based on merit, too, not just for the sake of it, okay? Now, to whatever corporate board is sitting in these companies that are uh, promoting the whole Nike thing and promoting the whole Bud thing and promoting this brand and that brand in the name of individual woke, it's going to backfire, okay? You keep lying to people, keep lying to people. People are going to smell the bullshit, and they're going to get rid of it. So regardless of how you feel about this person doing that or that person doing this, okay, it's a matter of certain scruples and internalized scruples that we all have and your own moral compass. Maybe that Dylan's a nice guy. I don't know. Do I really care? Not entirely. But you watch the little spurks and little perks and little video uh, montages he would do or she would do. And talk about this day being a girl and that day being a girl. When we both know it's just a man dressing up. Now, he went under the knife and had some facial surgery. I don't know if he had any surgery downstairs, right? But it it, it doesn't matter to me. I personally don't care what anyone does to their body as long as they're not hurting people taking their stuff. Now, look at this. I smoke cigarettes, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to kill me one of these days, whether I quit today, tomorrow, next week, 20, 30 years down the road, I might get the big C and then who knows, but that's my choice. It's my choice to do it. It's your choice not to do it or to do it. Vice versa. We are forgetting the basic principles of individual freedom here. Now, you can choose to drink the product. You can choose not to drink the product. I, myself, the last time I actually had a Bud Light to sit and drink, I think was maybe last summer. And my lifestyle is not going to change because there's a homosexual male selling it, whether, you know, the face is on the can or not. Now, when you actually look at the can, I don't have any pictures to prove it. Ladies and gentlemen, I expect you, my audience, my wonderful audience out there to look for it for yourself, to think for yourself. But it's, it's kind of comedic. It reminds me of Buddy Cole. The character that Scott Thompson from Kids in the Hall put together. And (laughs) maybe that's just my sense of humor. But when you you, you see an effeminate male having a weird smile on a beer can, something like this, uh, you tend just to kind of have a little snicker to yourself, a little chuckle. You know, because when you actually watch this individual's videos about how he's so happy to be a girl, you, you can look at him and go, yeah, okay. Next video. Because like I say, personally, I don't care what someone does with their body. You know, if, if you're happier being a female, then do it. If you're happier being a male, then do it. Right? But don't tell me you're the exact same. If you go under the knife to get your body altered to look like something, 
You know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to be that something. And I'm not disenfranchising any uh, people out there that have me watching this podcast and are contemplating the operations to go under the knife to become the opposite gender or a new identity. Okay, let's be realistic. You've got to be honest with yourself too. And when those individuals sit there and demand that you be kind, it's like, okay, well, yeah, you can be kind to people without giving the order to. You can be compassionate to people without being ordered to. But when you start making the rules up about pronouns and pronunciation and what you should believe in, then the whole strife of equality goes out the window. Because you're not promoting equality when you start demanding things for people. <laughs> you're, you're basically just promoting tyranny and uh, fascism. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And we are back again, ladies and gentlemen, the Krusty Canuck Podcast, episode 204. That's right. Bud Light and more BS for the masses. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, on this beautiful April 8th. 2023. Now, as I carry on again with this, my point of view, I've actually had a couple of debates online with some people. Uh, one person that, uh, you know, fancied herself as a, as a real educator, another individual that keeps promoting the whole woke mantra. Now I've said this before, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll keep saying it again too, in case you're a first time listener. I think it's safe to assume that the majority of us Canadians and Americans and my viewers all over the world were raised in a household where you don't judge people based on their gender, their looks, their politics. You judge people based on their actions and how they treat other people. Okay. Now there are gay people in my life. There's black people in my life. There's first nations people in my life, right? Because it's just the way I am. Okay. My best friend from high school, which I'm still friends with today for the past, you know, 32 years. He's First Nations. He's Dene from the Yukon. He's my friend because of his character, not because of the color of his skin. It's how he treats other people. There are a lot of females in my life that are I'm friends with still to this day because of high school and because of my early days in the military. And I like them because how how they treat other people, not because of the gender because I need a token friend here, a token friend there. It's because I made the choice to allow them into my life. So we have to embrace individuality to a certain degree where you can keep yourself above the water and out of the sanity, the bullshit for the masses. Okay. I don't care who endorses what, who gives grant to this or that to, because I'm a firm believer in meritocracy and earning something. And we, we can always tell that this is just a sales pitch. So this individual, Mr. Dylan or Miss Dylan, what have you? <laughs> I don't care. Right? I have more things to worry about. I have more demons to slay than worrying about a homosexual male that plays dress up selling beer. I, I don't care. My life is not going to change because someone's selling this beer, selling this product, selling that product, and there's a face of some person on there. <laughs> try, trying to bullshit you about a shit sandwich. I don't really care. My life isn't going to be compromised because that happens. So that being said, I'm going to drop the whole Bud Light thing because really, does it really matter? Honestly, you know, Gillette did the same thing a couple of years ago when you're telling men to be better, but don't be men, but be better men, but don't be toxic, but be better men, you know? And I remember the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> The satire that came after that too with a couple of veteran buddies of mine putting little videos together talking about this and that. And it was just, okay. There's nothing wrong with having some sensitivity and understanding people. Nothing wrong with being kind. But when that kindness is demanded in the name of an ideology, in the name of a cult gathering, then there's a problem with that. And we can decipher that. You don't need a college degree or a degree in university to understand that concept. When you smell bullshit, the detector goes up and we know this, right? It's that simple. Okay. And to that teacher out there that was giving me a hell of a hard time because her son was in the military for a few years. And because you are teaching little kids this garbage, don't be crying to the masses when it comes back and bites you in the ass. 
there's plenty of footage and personal confessions out there from individuals that went under the knife because society or the authority figures in their lives told them to do it. Now they got to live with that decision, right? And if you don't think that YouTube videos uh, provide substantial confessions, then fine. I will go out and find some more confessions if I have to. But that's just a start, okay? So the individuals out there that took it upon themselves to sit there and scold me, you can scold me all you bloody well want. I have something called real-world experience and real-life experience. And I can tell some of you teachers out there, I've seen more shit in a day than you have in a lifetime. So regardless of what your spectrum is, what this science book says, or that science book said, yeah, that science book said, sorry, human nature can be one filthy, nasty creature. Okay? And it takes a real adult, like a toxic male, to filter through that shit and to still be kind. You know what I'm saying? And it takes a real strong woman to do the same too. I know because I married one. Put that in your fucking pipe and smoke it there, teacher. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And now it's time for a message from my sponsor. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. Krusty Canuck here. Just to remind you, my wonderful audience out there, the Battlefit Bodywear was founded in Windsor, Essex, Ontario in 2019 and is a proud Canadian company. All of our apparel and accessories are purchased and printed right in our hometown by local independent business owners. And we pride ourselves on quality and customer satisfaction. At Battlefit Bodywear, we believe that every person has a warrior with them waiting to come out. Our brand is meant to inspire and, and fan the internal flame. Regardless of what your thing is, Stay to the next level and be the best version of yourself that you can be. We also believe in that maintaining balanced lifestyle is a key to a good life. and includes having a regimented and productive fitness and exercise schedule. Motivation comes and goes, but discipline will get you across the finish line. Get there with battle fit body wear. Trusty Canuck says so. Cheers. And that's right, ladies and gentlemen, that's Battle Fit Body Wear. Be battle fit, be battle ready, be limitless. Links will be in the description. Anyway, carrying on with episode 204. More BS for the masses and Bud Light. Yes, that's right. So to be honest with you, I think Bud Light's overrated. I think a lot of this beer is overrated. But needless to say, if you want a beer, have one. I don't drink like I used to, so I'm not going to sit and endorse anything, whatever. But more BS for the masses, yes. It's recently been discovered that uh, we have about 110, I believe, personnel in Poland at the moment. Uh, 110 Canadian troops assisting in training the Ukrainian military in fighting the Russian onslaught. And there'll be a couple articles I'll put in the descriptions for you is there in regards to our troops over there doing their part to help the less fortunate. And our federal government can't even bloody well feed them. Ain't that a great thing, eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just typical of uh, the Liberal Party. And I will say the Liberal Party, too, okay? Because I remember back in the 1990s when Jean Chrétien was in charge of things and they had to decrease defense spending and they had to uh, decrease certain perks, i.e. getting rid of the Airborne Regiment and cutting 30% of additional spending towards our military to bring the Canadian dollar up again. Yet, typical liberal fashion, they all gave themselves a raise every year, you know, every April 1st. And they also gave themselves more perks and privileges. And they canceled contracts and updated certain contracts here and certain contracts there. And if, I think from 1993 till roughly 1997, they had a pay freeze on our troops. Okay. And the conversations I remember having with some of uh, the people I hang out with today that were serving at that time had one hell of a go trying to make ends meet, okay? Not only were they deployed on exercises, getting ready for tours in the Balkans uh, during that civil war and other operations other than war and peacemaking, peacekeeping, uh, they had to struggle. And a lot of Canadian forces personnel went out and had to get second jobs just to make sure the light stayed on and make sure there was food in their fridge, okay? Now you're telling us 
that the government has spent so much money on the pandemic and helping the less fortunate in this country. And they gave themselves a raise this past April 1st again, too. Okay. So the average uh, backbencher is making an extra five, six hundred dollars a month, while shadow ministers and actual cabinet ministers are making an extra uh, three thousand or more a month. I think I no, I'm sorry, an extra thousand plus a month. So it works out to about ten thousand five hundred dollars a year. Sorry, my fast math, needless to say. And yet they can't afford to make sure that 110 or 120 personnel that are in Poland at the moment can be well-fed and looked after, okay? Now, based on the stories I read, family members of said soldiers and personnel that are over there are struggling to keep, <laughs> to keep the lights on, okay? Because the Canadian Forces Housing Authority, you know, the people that provide the homes for the troops on every base Canada-wide, bases their price scheme on the local market and we've seen the local market values now you're looking at some of these homes in the private market that are going for about a million five a million six and if you manage to get a mortgage to qualify for that your mortgage payments are ridiculous and the cane forces housing association ups the ante to stay level with the market right which is bullshit because those houses have been bought and paid for already about 20 times over okay and then you're going to charge the troops rent on that too. Quite a bit of money, you know, fair market value, even though no one's waiting in line to buy Canadian Forces housing, right? So you're making it hard for a young corporal, a master corporal, or any sergeants or warrant officers that was there to make sure they got a place to live, okay? And some of these personnel that are overseas are running out of money. They're told they'd be reimbursed by the military, yet the military can't reimburse them. Why? Because there's no fucking money to give them. But you can give away tanks. You can give away ammo. Right? You can give away more cash. Eh? On the sake of virtue. So you're sacrificing the welfare and the lives of 100-plus personnel in a foreign country so you can goddamn look good. That is pitiful leadership. And I'm talking to you, uh, Defense Minister Anita Arnand. And I'm talking to you, Miss Christopher Freeland. And I'm talking to you, Miss Seamus O'Regan. Shame for the Seamus. And I'm also talking to you there, Justin Trudeau. Okay. All four of you have sat and, and doted about the military and the sacrifices. And yet you're intentionally sticking it up their chuffs because you can't afford it. Yet you can go afford to go around and do photo ops at grocery stores. You can afford to go over here and talk about uh, the budget is going to balance itself and about new green technology. So you'll give our equipment away. You'll give away bullets and beans. Okay. Unfortunately, those bullets and beans aren't going to our troops. They're going to other troops. And you'll throw in cash incentives too to help the less fortunate in that country. But in the process, you're screwing our own men and women. Right. And what, what gets me the most, too, is that you have individuals that are all for that. Oh, he's doing such a great job, said no one. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Crusting Up Podcast, episode 204. That's right, a Bud Light and more BS for the masses. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck, on this beautiful 8th of April, 2023. Now, spring is coming. Things are thawing. Uh, I know my wife the other day was talking about how uh, there's so much dog poop outside. And I said, well, it's winter, dear, and you know, the snow is melting, so yeah. And I said, don't worry, you know, it'll be a weekend where I'll be out there scraping it all up. Oh, yeah, in typical domestic fashion, but hey, no worries that too. And uh, I want to thank uh, my audience out there, too. I've had some positive feedback in my last video, even though it was a month ago. So give yourselves a round of applause. That's right. You all know it. Well done on you. Well done, sirs and madams, and however you identify. I don't care if you drink Bud Light. Uh, and uh, just thanks for sticking around all this time, ladies and gentlemen. You know, like I said, I want to make this podcast a full-time commitment. I try to get episodes out at least two every two weeks, and I'm off. Um, 
<coughs> excuse me, <laughs> but things get tough and uh, things get tight, but uh, I'm starting to get a few more bucks in the bank, which is nice. Knock on wood. I hope CRA doesn't need it, even though I tried to ding me for 45 grand, but that's being sorted as we speak too, ladies and gentlemen. Anyhow, um, if you do like and hear what you see, please click subscribe, all that good stuff. Share this podcast, all of your social media platforms, share it in Rumble. Uh, I might do another live stream this Tuesday. Actually, no, I think I will do a live stream this Tuesday. Yeah, it'll be 4.30 uh, Mountain Standard Time or MDT, you know, Mountain Daylight Time, you know, however they want to change it. But it'll be 4.30 Alberta time, ladies and gentlemen. So 6.30 Eastern uh, to my Ontario and Quebec and... Uh, uh, Eastern United States listeners alike, by all means, please come on out, say hello. Be another Q and A on the uh, on this week's events and other things in general. If you want to ask me questions, feel free to ask me anything you want to know. Keep it clean, of course. Um, I don't mind if you swear because I swear. I don't care if you smoke cigarettes, smoke all the cigarettes you want, and have a beer or two, whatever you want to endorse, by all means. But yeah, I'm gonna have another Q and A this Tuesday. It'll be live, so look for here on YouTube, Rumble, and on Facebook, respectively, too. Uh, I don't have enough money at the time to branch it out to Twitter, but if you follow me on Twitter, please join me on YouTube, Facebook, and Rumble. And a special thank you out there to my Rumble subscribers. I've got up another 10 subscribers in the past week, so thank you very much. You guys are awesome. To all my Rumblers out there, please share my content around your social media platforms, too. And we'll carry on again with more of the BS. Now, pardon me for being a little winded and angry there, but um, if you want our men and women in uniform to sacrifice their time with family and loved ones and put their asses on the line, the least you can do is bloody well feed them and make sure there's ticks in the box for the basic needs of our men and women. But the government doesn't want to do that, right? Because the government wants to look like they really, really care, right? And since this new budget campaign and since this new uh, green idea, they haven't ventured too far out west recently. Have you noticed? Right? They haven't ventured too far out west because they're afraid of the confrontation. Which brings me to the point, too, about how uh, Mayor Jody Gondek out of uh, Calgary passed a bylaw where it forbids people to protest the Drag Queen Story Hour. And there's an MPP in Ontario that wants to do the same thing, make it illegal to protest Drag Queen Story Hour. Now, I will say this to you as all a couple times, just to make sure, okay? From what I gather, nobody is against drag queens, okay? Nobody hates drag queens. Nobody hates gay people. But I'm seeing a lot of hate towards straight people. And I'm seeing a lot of hate towards Christians, too. Maybe I'll say that for another episode. But from what I gather and the people I've spoken to, no one hates drag queens. People just don't want dirty stories read to their children. And people don't really, really want to see adult entertainers shake their booty and shake their goods in front of little kids. Because if you're going to talk about inclusivity, equality, and fairness, then why aren't you hiring Chippendales? And why aren't you hiring female strippers to do the exact same thing? Something to think about, eh? Or is that just too scary? Does that promote sexism or misogyny? And yet a man wearing makeup and a wig and sexy costumes and some with implants, some without implants, are shaking their tush and shaking their privates around all the time. That's, that's education, right? I'll leave that for you to decide, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a little dis disenchanting, a little concerning, uh, because I would like to see kids grow up and make their own decisions as they should, just like what you and I have had to. And if it means they have to fight harder to do it, then so be it. It takes us in Generation X to make that a reality, too, because I know there's a lot of Gen Xers out there that are promoting this bullshit. Okay. No one's condemning a drag queen for being a drag queen. No one's condemning a drag king for being a drag king. But you're subjecting children to a lifestyle that they really have no business being part of until they grow up as functioning adults to decide for themselves. I'll just leave it at that, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, I've been Krusty Canuck on this beautiful 8th 
of April 2023. I hope nothing but the best for you is all out there. I will uh, be around again live on Tuesday for another live Q&A. So follow me on Facebook, YouTube, and Rumble, respectively, uh, around 4.30 Mountain Standard Time or Mountain Daylight Time. Right, And ask me all the questions you want to know. Anything you want to ask me, just like say, keep it clean. All right, because I won't answer anything bigoted or racist. And just because I'm a white dude doesn't mean I'm a naturally internalized bigot or I'm an internalized misogynist. I try to be an internalized and ex externalized optimist with liberty, freedom, and security to do so. And so should you out there, ladies and gentlemen. But like I say, this has been Krusty Canuck for the 8th of April, 2023. Spring is here, so do what you can. Tidy things up. I know i got a whack of laundry to do this weekend because I've been working a lot, getting up with dark stupid, coming home really late in the afternoon, and just being tired. Just being exhausted, but still, I shall persevere, and so shall you, ladies and gentlemen. I wish nothing but good things for you all out there, and do what you can to help you out in these trying times. Check out my shop. Check out my links in the description, too. Please send me a comment. Click like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and especially on the tube there, do not forget to click that notification bell just to let yourself know that I've got new content up there, and that way you can catch an episode in a timely manner. And like I say, please share it around. Like I say, do what you can to help each other in these trying times, ladies and gentlemen. Be the best you. Look at you. And do what you can just to be a better you. You know, that's all. You know, you can be kind to yourself and still be kind to others. You know? And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, humanity merit wins the day. I'll see you this Tuesday. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy. <laughs>